The time was once again upon us for Ashes of Creation to give us their monthly live stream. And although it was not as exciting as it has been in the past, they really got us excited for what's to come in the next live stream in March with a Tower of Carfin dungeon tease. Jumping right into the good stuff, check out this teaser. We now know that Steven will be showing us the first Alpha 2 dungeon in the March livestream. As you just saw, we got to see the eerie ruins of the once great mage tower of Carfin, consumed by blood magic trying to save the city of Ayla from the apocalypse. A big tease in that as well was in the skybox and how you could see a broken moon in the sky that we also saw back in the November stream, which I now believe happened because of something within Carfin. Not only that, but we now know what the main boss of the dungeon will look like as well, as shown in the character art section of the monthly livestream. Her name is Loria Lamon and she is the reason for the massive amount of undead running through the Riverlands, and also looks to be a pretty formidable foe. How she has survived this long after the apocalypse is unknown, but it's also kind of impressive. Now, just a quick reminder that if you are in fact enjoying this content that I put out on a daily basis, then it would really mean a lot to me if, well, you know. On to the main content though, the main showcase of the entire livestream was really focused around an in-depth look at the UI. I have another breakdown of this coming later this week on the channel, but to give you a quick recap, throughout this part of the stream we were walked through the process behind making UI first and getting a look at some components to it, like the corners and the borders and the portrait frames, later seeing them come together in a more functional state with in-game photos and mockups of the UI. Some of the cool things we saw were various icons, ranging from abilities to class archetype icons, minimap icons, and some miscellaneous ones such as debuffs and weapons, along with some more ability icons. We also saw various components such as drop down menus, buttons, and filters that will all come together in the quest log. But the biggest thing that we saw was the very first look at the blacksmithing UI, which is the first time we have seen anything crafting related since Alpha 1. And if you played Alpha 1, you will know that crafting barely existed in it. It was in a very, very, very basic state and there was no complexity to it. It had minimal stuff you could make and there wasn't a lot to it. Obviously, this is still unfinished. What we are seeing here is a more simplistic approach to it for Alpha 2 compared to what it will ultimately become at launch time. We also learned that crafting is already in a playable state in the Alpha 2 testing of environment, which is pretty exciting. Even though we don't know to what extent yet, it's still exciting to hear the game coming together and hear things are implemented. And this here alone is proof that Intrepid does work on things that they don't show us. A lot of you think that, oh, Intrepid hasn't shown us this or that, so it's not done or it's not playable. Well, that's just not true. They're not going to show us everything. They might wait until it's in a more playable state, or they might leave some things open to surprise as well. And then lastly, we got a look at the character screen where you will be able to equip your your character's gear and things like that. I really like how when you open the character screen, the inventory is also attached to it, separate from the bag components. So you can really kind of customize your sets and go through your gear and figure out what it is you need to fine tune that build you're going for. From here into character art, we saw more Cyclops weapons, such as the mace, bow, wand, staff, and sword. We were expecting to see the Cyclops boss this month actually we we're gonna see it in two to three months back in december and this would have been the 
third month, but we haven't seen that yet, and we know Carpen's next month, so Cyclops will probably be sometime in April or May. From there, we got a look at Carpen weapons, which are some of the coolest looking weapon sets that I've seen from Intrepid so far. We have a couple of swords, we have a hammer, a mace, but all of these are in-game achievable weapons. They're not cosmetics, they're not NPC weapons, they are something that you can get in the game. And just seeing these is really putting more hype towards the Carfin dungeon that we are going to see in the next month. We then got a look at a couple of droppable sets, meaning gear that you can obtain in the game and they aren't cosmetic skins, including the Ambitious Academic, which was the uniform of some of these students who attended the Carfin University back when, you know, it was not filled with undead. And then there is the River Stalker, which kind of gives me Assassin's Creed vibes with the hood, but also it's more of like just hunter garb with the animal furs and things like that. We then see a model for this mysterious statue that was also shown in the Carfin teaser. And and once again, Loria Lament, who I showed earlier, which is one of the bosses inside the Carfin dungeon. Into concept art, we got another look at the ruins of Ayla, the human starting zone within the Riverlands, along with a divine gateway. I honestly was under some sort of impression that all of the divine gateways looked the same. I don't know why I thought that, but it's pretty cool to see a variety of them depending on the race and where they're located. We learned from this that more parts of Ayla will become accessible as the world changes and nodes evolve, encouraging players to return back to this area for various story and quest reasons beyond the initial starting experience. This is something that MMORPGs rarely ever do, sending you back to old zones and keeping old zones relevant. Most of the time you do those starting zones and then you're done with them. You really don't go back to them unless you're leveling a new character. So it's great to hear that Intrepid is going to keep those things from dying out and just becoming abandoned wastelands. And with the way nodes work, you'll see a lot more of this throughout the game because there aren't specific level zones for players and it's really based on your location to the node. The ruined city looks absolutely massive as we've seen various concept art from this in the past as well. This area is huge and it's going to have so much to it for a player to set out and explore and I really can't wait to jump in. Between this and the lore behind the Riverlands and some of the things in this zone, I'm really excited to jump in on it. That doesn't mean that the other zones won't have as extensive lore or as cool cities, but we haven't really seen any of those yet, so we don't really know. For miscellaneous information we got throughout the stream and the Q&A, we learned that exploration will be a huge part, which we already knew, with lots of systems in the game dedicated to exploration. There will be class utility spells, such as Arcane Eye, which reveals hidden doors, relics that can be discovered if you are in certain areas at certain times, jumping puzzles, and many, many more features that will really reward you for heading out into the world and exploring. Unreal Engine 5.1 took a bit longer than expected. Epic dropped Unreal Engine 5.1.1 while Intrepid was moving over. So Intrepid just decided to upgrade through the whole thing as well, which gives them the most up-to-date tech, and I guess 5.1.1 had some pretty cool features as well. I haven't done any research on that, so I don't know what those features are, but maybe there'll be an upcoming video. This is about done though now. They're really just in the bug testing phase after Monday. We then learned that there will be no weight capacity or weight management system tied to your inventory. Ashes of Creation will have no crossbows, even though there are crossbow cosmetic skins. Steven said he's going to clarify this information and let us know how these skins will apply and they'll probably apply to short bows but kind of weird that they were giving crossbow skins and then decided not to do crossbows but whatever corrupted players will be able to enter other players freeholds just not access any storage while they're corrupted racial abilities will probably take on a more background style approach to it where you can change where your character came from which will give you different perks so that players don't feel they are required to pick a certain race to do that one thing that that they want to in the game and feel that there's no other option. Steven reconfirmed that there will be no meters, including no threat meter, but threat will have other animations and ability indicators that can be used to figure out if you are dropping threat or not. Being a tank on a boat will be fairly similar when generating threat as being a tank anywhere else. You still have your full class kit available, including all of your taunts and your ranged abilities, along with things on the boat, such as attachments like potion launchers that generate threat, along with unique ammo that can be used to amplify threat as well. There will be classes that have detargeting abilities, and lastly, each summon of a summoner will have their own threat, and it won't share it with the player. So you can have th up to three summons at a time, and each one of these will have their own personal threat along with your own personal threat. So having three summons isn't going to generate more aggro for you. This also goes the same for combat pets in the game. Anyways, what was your favorite part of the February live stream? Drop a comment.
comment down below and if you're new to ashes and if you have to create an account feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the farms buy some cosmetics or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of vera otherwise be sure to click that subscribe button hit that thumbs up turn on the bell for notifications and stay tuned for a lot more to come